In this introductory message, we cover important and fundamental insights concerning faith. All right, we're going to rise up to our feet and make our declaration this morning. So if you would, I don't mind, let's rise to our feet. Well, let's hold our Bibles high up in the air. And uh, let's say this together, loud, bold, and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to him I am an absolute surrender. I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you, shake hands, give them a good smile, share your name with them, and uh, you may be seated. This, Thank you. Thank you. Over the last few weeks, we've uh, spent time talking about the power of God's word. And, uh, you know, hopefully it has stirred up your desire, stirred up your passion for the word of God. And, uh, you know, just taking time to read, to meditate. And to let the word of God fill your heart, fill your life. And we want to build on that and spend some time talking about the subject of faith in God. Now this is not a new topic. We keep revisiting this topic over and over again. So that we could all uh, stay reminded, maybe encouraged in this whole area of faith in God. And so we're going to spend several Sundays just on this subject talking about faith. Now, uh, sometimes we think, oh, I've heard this before. (laughs) But I want to, I just want to encourage you that each time we come back to some topic, there's always greater depth and fresh insights that we receive from the Word of God. So even if you've heard this before, I want you to stay open. Now, I've been teaching, personally teaching on faith since the age of 15. That was a long time ago. The first seminar we conducted, the faith seminar we conducted was in Richmond Town Methodist Church. Uh, Those days, they had a Stevens Hall. And now today, it's broken down and, you know, it's no no longer there. Uh, But the first faith seminar I ever conducted was there uh, in the the Methodist Church, teaching about faith. And so, it's been decades of teaching the same thing. But I can assure you that each time we just go back to that and, and talk about it. It's fresh. It's alive. It's powerful. And it's, it's new, always something new uh, to learn and for us to grow into. So um, don't tune off just because it's a, a very familiar subject, right? Keep your heart open. Say, God, I want to learn something. I want to just grow in this area of faith. So this morning, I want to uh, just as a way of introduction, cover several basic truths on the subject. And then Uh, We will delve further and further in the weeks to come. This is going to be a 12-course meal. Okay? So it's like the Chinese food, right? Not like the Indian. You put everything together, mix it, you're done. (laughs) It comes in courses, right? So over the next 12 Sundays, we are going to be talking on, uh, you know, just dwelling on the subject of faith. But each Sunday, it's going to be something new, right? Now, why is faith important and why is this whole um, 
aspect of us having faith in God. Why is it so important? Because, you know, many of us think that God is attracted to our needs. But really, that's not true. Because if God was only moved by our needs, then, then all of us would have had our needs taken care of automatically. But we know that's not the case. Our God is not just attracted to the challenges we face. Because if God was only responding to our challenges, then he would definitely just step in and all our challenges would be taken care of. But that's not it. Smith Wigglesworth put it like this. He said, God would pass over a thousand people to get to one person who has faith in him. Right? And Smith Wigglesworth was called as an apostle of faith. So he knew something about faith. And he's saying, you know, God, will, God is drawn to somebody who has faith in him. And that's what we want to be. We want to be a people who have faith in God. And of course, we want to learn how to do it right. Uh, we want to learn how to do it the Bible way. Uh, and, and so we are embarking on this journey of learning about faith in God. Now, God is definitely a God of compassion. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. But he responds uh, to faith in our hearts. He is moved by uh, when he sees people who have faith in him. And I trust that at the end of this this whole series of messages, you and I will be people of strong faith in God. We will know how to move with faith uh, in God so that we can see God work in us and work through us. And like Hebrews 11, those, those great heroes of faith, they did great things of, uh, in faith. May it be written so about you also. That so and so, by faith, did such and such things in their lifetime. Amen? May it be written so of you as well. So this morning, as a primer to this whole subject, I'm just going to uh, give different statements concerning faith. These are very basic, uh, uh, and then we will build on this in the weeks to come. So first of all, faith connects us to God. You see, you and I uh, live in this natural world where predominantly we operate out of our mind and our body, right? So we all, uh, we are so to speak, very natural in our way of life. But God is spirit. You and I don't relate to God in the natural. You know, like, hello God, how are you? <laughs> it's not that you see God, you touch God in the natural. We don't relate to God that way. God is spirit. And so for you and me to connect with God who is spirit, there has to be something of our spirit reaching out to him. And that faith in our heart is what connects to God. So Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. So this is a prerequisite. You come to God, you come believing that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently Seek him. So that is a prerequisite. You can't believe me. I believe that God is and that he rewards me if I seek him. He rewards, he responds uh, and he is drawn to me as I seek him. So faith is what connects us with God. And God responds to that. He says, if you come to me, come believing. Come with faith in your heart. And that also leads us to the next point, which is that faith pleases God. A faith is required to please God, Hebrews eleven six, 6, because it says, without faith, it is impossible to please. So you put it in a positive way, your faith pleases God. That word please is the same word that was, or a similar word that was used when the Lord, when God the Father spoke about his beloved son. He's saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So imagine, when faith is in your heart, God says, hey. I like that. I'm pleased with that. That you have faith in your heart. And you and I can have faith in our heart concerning various things. Now maybe some of us may want to have faith in our heart for healing, for deliverance, for increase, for growth, for promotion, for open doors, for opportunities, uh, for unusual miracles in our circumstances. So many things that we can have faith in God for. But your faith in God pleases God. God sees that. Now on the one hand, you and I are justified. You and I are made righteous. And that, that, that's, there's no question on it. But here's the additional thing that God is looking for. He's looking for faith in our hearts. Because faith pleases God. The third thing we want to mention here uh, in this, this morning is that our faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, when the world talks about faith, 
uh, it's, they, they, they think about, well, you're just trying to believe something. Think about some mental gymnastics. <laughs> you try to convince yourself of something. Or you're trying some mind game. You're trying uh, mind over matter. So that's kind of what the world uh, thinks about faith. But our faith is not a mental game. Our faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. It's in God. It's in the being of the great creator of this universe. Our faith is in the person. That's why Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Author, he's the originator. He's the source. He's the beginning of our faith. The word there in the Greek literally means the captain, the pioneer, the person who leads from the front, setting us an example, the author. Of our faith. And he's the finisher. He's the consummator. He's the completer. He's a perfecter of our faith. And again, the Greek, it means somebody who himself has uh, demonstrated it uh, in all its fullness, so setting us an example. So Jesus is the author and finisher. He is the leader, the pioneer. The, he shows us the way how to live by faith. And he says, Look at this. This is how I want you to live. I've done it myself. This is the standard. Of how I want you to live. The author and finisher of our faith. So our faith comes from him. In Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus said, have faith in God. So it's not have faith in your own mind. Have faith in some logic or reason. No, have faith in God. So our faith is in the person, in him. The one who is great, powerful. Uh, some versions in the literal Greek would also translate like this. Have faith of God. Have the faith that God puts, God breeds, God builds in you. Have faith of God. This is the God kind of faith. Faith that comes from him. And it is because of him. Uh, that, that, that's what we are talking about. So uh, it is different from what the world uh, talks about. Now faith is based on relationship. This is very important. Faith is not some technique. Now, many of us who have taught faith, uh, we're guilty of this and I myself am. We use analogies like faith is a switch. You turn it on. <laughs> well, you know, that, that analogy, that illustration serves some sort of a purpose. It's okay. But sometimes it leaves a wrong impression. That as though faith is some mechanical thing that you work in, it's like going to a vending machine, you put in your five rupee note and you press the button and out comes your whatever you want. And so we kind of tend to leave the impression because of the way we have taught about it. But really understand that Bible faith is based on your relationship with God. It's about you knowing God. So if I know Stephen Joe's well, and if he tells me, Ashish, I will meet you at 10 a.m. And if I know him well, he will show up at 9.59. So I know he will be there. His word carries weight. I know. Faith. Right? But some others, if they tell me 10 o'clock, I know it's going to be 10.30. <laughs> right? So there's not too much of credence to those statements they would make. So faith is based on relationship. And like we see in James 2 and verse 23 about Abraham who was called the father of faith. It says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. So there is a connection between faith and friendship. Your friendship with God is what undergirds your faith in him. Are you with me? So we must grow in our friendship, our relationship with God, to know Him. So that the more we know Him, then we can have that much more faith or confidence in Him. Another important truth about faith is faith is of the heart. That's important for us to know. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 verse 10, With the heart one believes. So faith is not of the mind, faith is of the which means that you can have faith in your heart even when you have questions in your mind. The fact is, none of us have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. There will always be questions to which we don't have answers. But does that mean you can't have faith because you have unanswered questions? No. Faith is of the heart. It's not of the mind. 
So you can have faith in your heart even when there are doubts running through your mind. You can have faith in your heart even when there are unanswered questions in your mind. Because faith is of the heart. It's not of the mind. Amen? So somebody says, do you believe? Yes, I believe. But how about this? Sorry, I don't have the answer for that. But I still believe. Because I know whom I believe. Amen? So faith is of the heart. That's very important as we journey uh, uh, in this on learning how to live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 tells us that we walk by faith, not by sight. So that means faith supersedes our natural senses. Our natural senses are important. What you see and hear, uh, hear and feel, touch and taste, that is important. Of course, we do a lot of things based on that. And that is good. But when you're walking by faith, faith supersedes that. So faith is superior to our five senses. We walk by faith, not by sight. Now, God calls all of us to live by faith. He calls all of us to live by faith. Now that's important. Romans 1 verse 17, which is quoted in many places in the Bible. It says, the just shall live by faith. Live by faith. Now that word by, the preposition by, simply means, uh, it talks about origin. That means everything you're doing in life should originate out of faith. Everything, that means whatever you think, say, and do, should originate from your faith in God. Why are you thinking like that? Because I have faith in God. Why are you speaking like that? Because I have faith in God. Why are you uh, doing like that? Why are you living like that? Because I have faith in God. We live by faith. Now, here's the thing I want us to stress. Many of us think that faith is an occasional thing we do. Oh, you're in trouble? You need to have faith in God. Oh, you have a need. Oh, now it's time to have faith in God. No. You live by faith. When you wake up in the morning, it's a life of faith. When you go to sleep at night, it's a life of faith. It's something we do all the time. We live like this. It's not something we visit now and then when you have a specific needs. Are you understanding this? We live by faith. You definitely need faith when you get out to drive your car. Say, God, I am believing that you'll keep me safe. <laughs> faith. On your job, God, I'm believing that you will bless me. Uh, in your place of work, whatever. God, I'm believing you, bless, you will work, take care of these needs and so on. So living by faith. God calls us to live by faith. Now in the Christian world that live by faith has become synonymous with, I don't have a job, so please give me money. <laughs> that is not what Bible says about living by faith. It's every believer, all of us is called to live by faith. And everything we think, say, and do should originate out of faith in God. Why do you think like this? Because I have faith. Why are you speaking like this? Because I have faith. Why are you doing like this? Because I have faith in God. We're called to live by faith. So, what is faith? We are familiar with Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So let's try to understand it. First of all, you've got to hope for something if you're going to have faith. That word hope simply means expectation. You've got to expect something. What are you expecting? Without hope, you cannot have Faith. Hope is something you desire, something you expect. For instance, our hope when you come to service on Sunday morning or when you gather together to pray, you come with some expectation. Amen? At least God speak to me. God healed me. God delivered me. God ministered to me. You come with expectation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. you got to have something you're hoping for. I'm hoping to or I'm desiring, I'm expecting for, for God to bless me in my career so I can grow professionally. I'm expecting God to meet this need. I'm expecting God to work a miracle. Now faith is the substance of that which you are expecting. Your expectation. Faith is the reason for great expectations. 
Now, faith is a substance. The word substance there simply means confidence, assurance. And in, in Bible times, it was used for, the, for title deed. So when you owned something, you owned your vehicle, you, had a, you own your vehicle, you have a title deed, your proof of ownership. You own a, a house or an apartment, you have a title deed, proof of ownership. So faith is your title deed for your expectation. Are you understanding that? Your faith is your proof that you've got it. It's your proof of ownership of your expectation. That means your faith says, I got it. But your friend says, but I can't see it. I got it. Where's the proof? My faith. My faith is the proof of ownership of what I'm expecting God to do. Faith is the substance, the title deed of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence meaning conviction. It is uh, proof of existence. It is the conviction of things not seen. You can't see it, but you're convinced about it by faith. So two things. Faith is proof of ownership. Two, faith is proof of existence. That it is there. The Amplified Bible brings this out very nicely. So you can look at that same verse from the Amplified Bible. It puts it like this. Faith is the assurance. The confidence, the title deed of things we hope for. Being the proof of things we do not see. And the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So it's not revealed to your senses. But faith says it's done. It's done. I know it's done. So how do you know? It's in my spirit. I've got the title deeds. My faith in God. It's the proof of ownership. It's a conviction of the reality. Of even unseen realities. Even though it's not revealed to your physical senses. That is faith. Amen? Now, as we progress, we will use the words faith and believe interchangeably as synonymous. Uh, both of them in the Greek come from the same word, some same root word. Just that faith is a noun. Believe, I'm talking about the Greek, is a verb. So believing is the act of having faith. It's putting your faith to work. That's believing. But they are synonymous. So in our conversation, our teaching, we will use them interchangeably, faith and believing. But just remember, faith is a noun. Believe is a verb. Believe means you're acting your faith. You're putting it to work. So now, how was faith conceived? Romans 12, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is based on the word. God has spoken something. That becomes the source. That becomes the basis for faith in our hearts. God has spoken. Faith comes through the hearing of the word of God. Now that word, word there in the Greek is rhema. Meaning it's a uttered word. It's a spoken word. That means it is something God is speaking now. So when you're reading the written word, God is speaking it to you now. That becomes a basis for you to have faith. God has spoken to me through his word. It's there in the word. I've seen it. That becomes the basis of your faith. But there's also a second way that God speaks to us. He speaks to us in the now by his Holy Spirit. So God can give you a personal word. Uh, through, through a prophecy, through a, a witness in your spirit. He can give you a word now by his spirit. By his Holy Spirit. And that also becomes the basis for your faith in God. Somebody gives you a prophetic word. That's a basis. I'm going to have faith in it. And as an example. In, uh, in, in Acts. The 27th chapter I think it was. Uh, where Paul. And, and, and he's being uh, taken to Rome. In the ship with many other people. They run into rough weather. And then he tells the people. He says you know. People an angel of God stood by me. And said that all our lives will be saved. So I believe God that it will be exactly as it was told me. 
So he had a null word. An angel came and delivered it to him. But that became the basis of his faith that everybody's life will be saved. So for you and me also, we will have a nerve word. God may give you a dream. He may give you a vision. He may speak to you by his spirit. That also, that's a rhema. That's a spoken word. That also becomes the basis for your faith. So there is the written word that God quickens to you. There is also a now word that God speaks to you by his spirit. And both of these become the basis for our faith in God. Now, we must understand that faith in the word is faith in God himself. Are you all with me so far? So when you have faith in the word, you're actually having faith in God himself. Now think about the Roman centurion. You know, he came to Jesus and said, you know, Lord, there's, I have one of my people at home. He's really sick. You know, and then Jesus' immediate response is, I will come and heal him. But what the Roman centurion says, he says, Lord, speak the word only and my servant will be just speak the word. And Jesus was amazed. And then the Roman centurion went on to explain. He says, Lord, I am a man under authority. I have authority. When I say go, people go. When I say come, people come. So he understood the authority this person is carrying is the same authority that is in the word. The power that this person is carrying is the same power that's in the word. So Lord, just speak your word. It is enough. And Jesus called that great faith. So what is great faith? Great faith recognizes that God's power is in his word. When God has spoken his word, that's enough. So faith in the word of God is faith in the God of his word. God of the word. Amen? So when you believe that, God's word... God himself is, is behind it. Or if you want to put it like this, God is in that word. He's backing it up 100%. So I have faith in that word. And you read it in scripture. I have faith in that. And God calls that great faith. Just a couple of things when we close here. Faith is like a muscle. It grows as it is exercised. So we all begin with Romans 12, 3, where it says that God has dealt to each of us a measure of faith. So every believer... Each one of us has a measure of faith. It's in your heart. You have the capacity to have faith in God. It's there. But that faith can grow. As Paul writes to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3, he says, your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith is growing. So your faith can grow. And you and I should Seek to grow our faith, to increase in our faith, to become stronger in our faith. Your faith can grow. And the way in which you grow, our, uh, way we grow our faith is by nurturing it, feeding it, but we must also exercise it. You put it to work. Live by faith every day. Use your faith. You're with me so far? Last two points here. I told you it was a 12 course meal. <laughs> But not just today, the next 12 Sundays. But <laughs> There are several factors that influence faith. That means, you know, as, even though this whole time we're going to focus on the subject of faith, understand that for faith itself to be effective, there are other factors involved. We also have to grow in other areas in our lives. For instance, Galatians 5 and verse 6 says, Paul writes, he says, faith works through love. So I can't say I have great faith and I hate my brother. You just don't. It's going to short circuit your faith at some point. It's not going to work. Because faith works by love. Or Peter writes in 2 Peter 1 verse 5 through 7. He says, add to your faith. Add to your faith. So faith needs these additions. Add to your faith. Virtue. Knowledge. Self-control. Endurance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Add to your faith. So faith needs these additional things in our lives for it to keep growing, for it to keep us strong. So we, should need, we also need to grow in these areas as well. Are you with me? So it's like you're giving it a conducive environment for it to keep growing. 
So make sure we walk in love, make sure you're walking in godliness, make sure you're en- you have endurance. And all these things add, need to be added to our faith for it to grow. And the last one is this. You know, why are we talking about faith and why is it important for us to grow in faith? Because this is very important. Faith causes the power of God to work in our lives. We all want to see that. Some of us may be faced with mountains. God, this, this is an obstacle. How do I get it out of my way? Well, Jesus told us, you know, with your faith, you can move the mountain. God, there are closed doors. How do I see a door open? God, I, I need to see provision come in. God, I want to see these great things done through my life or so on. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations. We all want to see things happen in our lives. How are we going to see the power of God come in and work in those areas? Faith causes the power of God to come in. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11, he is writing to the Thessalonians. He says, uh, we also pray for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So he would fulfill. That means he would complete your work of faith with his So you work your faith. That means you put your faith to work. You do something out of faith. When you do something out of faith, what happens? God completes that work with his power. You see, God's power flows where somebody is doing something by faith. Because they depend on God. They trust in God. They rely on God. They have confidence in God. His power begins to flow. When you're doing something out of faith. On the contrary, when there is no faith, it nullifies. It nullifies the power of God. It nullifies the word of God. And I close with this verse, Hebrews 4 verse 2. Indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. See, the same message was preached. But it didn't benefit them. Why? They didn't mix faith with what they heard. So you mix faith with the word. The word comes. You say, okay, I'm taking that word. This is the word of God. I'm going to have faith in it. I'm going to act on it. And that's when the word releases its power in your life, in my life. So faith is so important for all of us to live by this Faith in God. Now, knowing is important to believing. You need to know so that you can believe. But knowing is not the same thing as believing. Many of us think we believe because we know. But the real test is whether, whether you believe something in, uh, in believe in what you know is would you act on it? Because you can know something but not act on it. Then you don't really believe it. You could say, I know aeroplanes do fly. I know they go up in the sky and they come back down. But I'm afraid to go in one. So you know, but you don't believe. You know they fly, but you don't believe that they can take you. So you're not acting on it. This is an example. So, it's good that we know the things of God. But God is inviting us to believe that. Believe the word that you know. Believe it for your life, for your family, for your situations. Amen? So, this morning, this is an introduction to this whole subject of faith. And we're going to build on this in the weeks to come as we explore uh, the New Testament, uh, the word of God. On how you and I can walk in faith. And God calls each of us to live by this. Everything you think, say and do. Let it originate out of your faith in God. You say, God, I'm doing it because you said this in your word. Because you promised this in your word. I'm moving out on it. I'm having confidence in it. And you and I will see God work in our lives. Amen. Let's take a few moments just to uh, worship God. And we will close. I just call our worship team up, please. And. I want to just pray a simple prayer this morning and just say, God, help me to learn how to live by faith. Everything I think, say, and do, 
Let it come out of faith in you. Because I believe in you, I'm willing to do this. Because I'm willing, because I believe in you, I'm willing to speak like this or act like this. We are called to live by faith in God. I want you to just take a few moments this morning and say, God, help me. I want to be somebody who lives by faith. And Father, even as we pray before you, God, even as we pray, I ask that our hearts will be encouraged to know that you have already given to each of us a measure of faith. We have it in our hearts. We have the capacity to believe you, to trust you, to live by faith. And this morning, God, where there is fear, where there is anxiety, where there is worry, where there are things that cripple us let faith come let faith arise and displace these things out of our lives help us to be people of faith Father help us to be people of faith for the hopes we have for the dreams we have for the expectations we have let faith come our proof of ownership. Let it come. Let it rise in our hearts. to to nurture help nurture God and nurture each one
each person in this journey of faith. And I pray that each one of us, God, will be like the people in the Bible, that it'll be written of us by faith. So and so did such and such things. By faith, they obtained a good report from God. By faith, they saw cities changed. By faith, they saw lives reached. They, they, they did all these great things by faith. I ask that each one of us here, Father, we would see great victories in our lives by faith. By faith in you. I thank you, oh God. Thank you. I praise you. I honor you, Father. We're going to close and I'll just pronounce the benediction. If you need prayer, ministry personally, we'll be here. You're welcome to come and we'll just pray and minister to you personally. And after that, we'll have the VIP banquet. Those of you who are with us new in the last few months, you're welcome to stay back, have lunch with us, spend some time with us. Let's just close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a good Sunday. Enjoy your afternoon. See you again. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.